In Lesson 11.1, you will find measures of central tendency and dispersion. Statistics are numerical values used to summarize and compare sets of data. A measure of central tendency is a number used to represent the center or middle of a set of data values. In Example 1, the data set gives quiz scores for a math class. Find the mean, median, and mode for the data set. The mean or average of n numbers is the sum of the numbers divided by n. So all we have to do to find the mean of these quiz scores is to add them up. So 16 plus 18 plus all the way out to the end of our list, 24, and divide that sum by the number of quiz scores, which is 8. So we're going to find that x bar, when we run that through our calculator, is equal to 20.5. Okay, then we need the median. The median of n numbers is the middle number when the numbers are written in order. So since these numbers are written in order, and since there's an even number of numbers, we don't exactly have a middle number. So to find the median of this list, we need to take an average of the two center numbers. We need to find the mean of 21 and 22. So we'll add them together and divide by 2. So this is 43 divided by 2, or 21.5 is our median a little more than our mean. And our mode for this list of quiz scores, the mode of n numbers is the number or the number or numbers that occur most frequently. And you can see that in our list 22 occurs three times. So our mode is 22. It's the quiz score that occurs the most frequently in that list of eight quiz scores. So they're all different. Our mean, median, and mode are close, but they're all different. A measure of dispersion is a statistic that tells how dispersed or spread out data values are. In example two, we want to find the range and standard deviation for the quiz scores in the data set from example one. So to find the range, that's the difference between the greatest and least data values. All we have to do is subtract to find the range. So 24, which is the greatest quiz score, take away 16, which is the smallest quiz score, is going to give us a range of 8. And then our standard deviation, or sigma, we have to find by using the formula. We need to take the square root of each data value, so 16 minus uh, x bar, or the mean, which we found to be 20.5 on the previous page. So we'll set it up to show what we're going to put in our calculator, and then we'll run it through our calculator. All the way out to the end, 24, take away that x bar, that mean of 20.5, and that difference squared. And it's all divided by n, the number of numbers in our list, which is 8. So if we run that through our calculator and approximate that uh, standard deviation to one decimal place, we get 2.4. If the standard deviation is small, it means that our data is tight, close, close to one another. But if our standard deviation is large, that shows that our data is spread out or dispersed. An outlier is a value that is much greater than or much less than, the, than most of the other values in a data set. In example three, the winning scores for the first nine games of a soccer season are given. In A, we want to find the mean, median, mode, range, and standard deviation of the data set. So let's start with the mean, or x bar. We find that, remember, by adding up our, our scores here, our uh, scores for these soccer games. 
and dividing by the number of scores, which they tell us is 9. So I'm going to get a, a mean here of 3 when I run that through my calculator. And then I also need a, a median, the number in the middle. These scores are not in order, so we're going to have to put them in order. So we have a 1, we have two twos, we have three threes, and we have two fours, it looks like, and, oops, and a five. So let's make sure I have all nine scores. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, and in order then, we're looking for the median, the number in the middle. There's nine, an odd number. So three is going to be the number in the middle with four scores on either side. So our median is three. Okay, and then the mode. The mode for this uh, list of soccer scores is also three because there's three threes in our list and that's the uh, most numbers of any other number. Okay, and then uh, we want range for this list of scores. So we'll just subtract 5, which is the largest score, take away 1, which is the smallest, is going to give us a range of 4. And now we need a standard deviation or sigma, so I'll set that up and run it through the calculator. But it's going to be 3, take away the mean of 3, squared, plus 4, take away that mean of 3, squared, plus, and I'll run that all the way out to the end, the last number in our list, which is 2 uh, minus the mean of 3, squared. And we're going to divide by the number of scores in that list, which is 9. So I'm going to approximate this standard deviation again to one decimal place, and I'm finding that I get 1.2 for a standard deviation. Okay, then in B it says the winning score in the next game is an outlier, 9. Find the new mean, median, mode, and range, and standard deviation. So I'm going to put 9 in our list. So now we have 10 scores, 10 soccer scores for the season. And we'll find our new mean for this list. We'll add up the numbers in the list again, all the way out to 9 and divide by 10 this time. So we're going to find that our new mean is 3.6. Okay, we need a median. And we put the numbers in order. Since 9 is an outlier, I can just add it to our list. Okay, and this time we're going to have an even number of numbers, 10, so I'm going to have to take those center two, and they're both 3, and divide by 2. So I'm getting 6 divided by 2, or 3, for a median. That's the mean of the two center numbers, the average. Okay, and now I need a mode. The mode hasn't changed. The mode is still 3. It's the number, the score that appears the most often in our list. We need a range. Range is going to change because now my largest value is 9 and my smallest value is 1. So I have a new range of 8 for this data. And now I need a standard deviation again, or sigma. So we'll set it up again. Uh, 3 minus that um, x bar, which is 3.6 this time, plus 4 minus x bar, all the way out to 9 minus 3.6, that squared. And all over this time, there's 10 scores in our list, so we'll divide by 10. Okay, and when we approximate this standard deviation, we're going to get 2.1. So you can see that our standard deviation has increased, which means our data in the second set is more spread out, more dispersed. Okay, and now we need to answer some questions. Which measure of central tendency does the outlier affect the most? And that is going to be the, the mean. 
and the least is the median and mode since they stayed the same. Okay, and now D, what effect does the outlier have on the range and standard deviation? And the outlier, we can say, cause both the range and the standard deviation to increase. All right, both increase. Include with your notes of this video this practice problem. The data set below gives the recorded speeds in miles per hour for 10 different cars on a local highway. In A, you want to find the mean, median, and mode of the data set. In B, you want to find the range and standard deviation of the data set. And then in C, the next car that drives by is having car trouble, so the recorded speed is 36 miles per hour. You want to find the new mean, median, mode, range, and standard deviation of this data.